Hi, and welcome to another video brought to you by plcgurus.net. So if you've been following along in our Studio 5000 Essentials video series, um, you, will, you will know that we've gone right from basically a, a beginner level and we're slowly incrementing our skills or adding to our toolbox of skills working in and about the Studio 5000 Control Logics environment. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, I do highly recommend that you do that so you can get up to speed with us here. Okay, so today what I thought I would do uh, is show you the workflow necessary if you encounter a processor fault. So if you ever encounter in the field a faulted processor, uh, these are the steps that I would typically take in order to, number one, find out or at least get a good idea of what the fault is and then take the necessary steps to correct that fault. So probably the easiest way to demonstrate a faulted processor is to trip out something called the watchdog timer. So a watchdog timer is intended to prevent software bugs from causing a PLC program from hanging up, meaning that something has caused the program to not scan top to bottom in a certain period of time. So there are many things that we can check at compile time, but something like programming an infinite loop for into your program, we simply cannot check at compile time. It's known as an, an undecidable problem in computing and software engineering. And because of this, we need to provide another mechanism by which we can detect if a user has done something very bad and programmed something like an infinite loop in their code. Okay. So that's enough of our software engineering talk. Anyhow, so let's head on over to, I'm gonna right click on the main task. So every task will have something called a watchdog timer set up in it. So you can see here the default is set at 500 milliseconds. So what I'm gonna do is trip out this watchdog timer by setting it to the smallest possible value I can, which is 0.1 milliseconds. I'm gonna click apply and I'm gonna click okay. And you can see that pretty much right away, my processor is now faulted. Okay, so we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish here, uh, which of course would never be the case in a production environment. We're not gonna intentionally trip out or fault out our processor. But anyhow, so what you wanna do when you stumble or come across a faulted processor in the field, and you, you'll know that because the okay light on the processor itself will be red or flashing red. Okay, so you, what, the first thing you want to do is get online with the controller, which we are now. You can see the controller fault um, indicator is, is flashing. And I want to go ahead and click this little fly out button here. And the first thing before I clear the fault is I want to go ahead and go to the fault. Because like I said, in most cases, you're not going to be the one creating the fault. Um, so this will give you a good indication on what the fault is is okay so of course we know that in this case it's a watchdog fault and it gives you a description on the fault so it tells you a task watchdog expired may have been caused by an infinite loop again our undecidable type problems a complex program or a higher priority task and we'll get into some of that a little bit later on okay great so now we have an idea of what the problem is so what i want to do is go ahead and clear that fault and notice as soon as i did that it kicked me into program mode so it's giving me an opportunity to go and correct the fault, de-energizing my outputs in program mode, and allowing me to correct the issue. Okay, so let's just go out of here, and let's go back here and actually fix our watchdog problem, and put that back to the default 500, and click apply. Okay, and once we've done that, we can go back into run mode, and we should be all good to go here. So this is generally the workflow that I would follow if I would walked up to a machine and I saw the controller was faulted. Um, and typical faults that you would probably come across in the field would be some kind of math overflow type fault or common ones I've seen is the user program is trying to index an element or access an element of an array that doesn't exist. So either it's exceeded the, the upper and lower bounds of that array. Okay, so I hope you found this video informative. Uh, please do subscribe to our channel, send us a like, and head on over to our blog site at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. Thanks for watching.